research trip across six countries worldwide. We try to dive deeper in understanding the barriers that prevent women from accessing and using digital technology. So we had interviews with people working for digital initiatives, women engagement groups, and policymaking. We asked those people about which strategies have been particularly successful. The internet has changed the world faster than any previous technology. In less than three decades, more than 40% of the world's population have gone online. Unfortunately, the benefits of digitalization are not equally distributed. And in fact, the internet empowers only those people who have access to it. Women are particularly affected by the digital divide. In Africa, the proportion of women using the internet is 25% lower than the proportion of men. In least developing countries, only one out of seven women is using the internet compared with one out of five men. Looking at women in rural areas in least developing countries, it seems as if the barriers are even higher. All other factors being equal, a rural woman is 23 less likely than her urban counterpart to own a mobile phone. So there are numerous, uh, numerous structural factors that can limit whether women use ICTs, um, Internet and Communication Technologies, and how they use them, such as social barriers that mean women may not have the literacy skills they need, material barriers that mean they may not have the money to buy or use ICT devices, or may not have control over their own or household, household finances, and psychological barriers that mean women believe they should not or are unable to learn ICT skills. So for ICTs to benefit women in agricultural production and to challenge existing gender imbalances and rural livelihoods, it is necessary to understand women's status and the gender roles and responsibilities in the society. So if gender is missed in rural digital initiatives, then an opportunity to improve the socioeconomic conditions of women who are the largest and most active component of the rural population will be missed. Especially if we look at the potential of ICTs for women rural farmers. They offer exciting opportunities to unlock the business potential of traditionally marginalized and isolated women farmers. But how exactly can we ensure that digital projects and tools will reach to both women and men in the rural sector. We will have a look at some successful examples in the agricultural area that show a specific gender sensitive component. So radio services such as Kilimo Media um, offer a cost effective and sustainable option for getting relevant agricultural information to a large numbers of farmers on time, for capturing their voices and for rapidly responding to their needs gives extension officers and agricultural experts a so-called uh, megaphone to reach out to a greater number of people. So the extension officers who are involved in that program. They reported that using the radio has helped them to do their standard duties more efficiently. Kilimo Media establishes a gender advisory panel at each of the local radio stations. Their broadcasting schedules, they are organized to identify peak listening periods for men and for women. So those listening groups are also organized by Kilimo Media for women to encourage discussion, to learn and to exchange information. And the extension officers, they are trained in ways to include women in their work. So for example, both men and women, lead farmers are interviewed during the shows. Another example is Shamba Shape Up. This is a popular, popular reality TV farm makeover show that profiles the efforts of farmers around the country as they adopt new practices that improve their farms. Episodes are aired on Citizen TV in English and in Swahili, and they can also be viewed online. An estimated 18% of rural households in Kenya have television, and 22% of rural women report watching television at least once a week. One of the presenters of the show is a woman, and both men and women farmers have participated as guests in the show. Another example is Farm Inc. 
Africa Farmers Club is a, um, a community in an application. So farmers share their success stories, their failures, their advice, and their questions. They recently launched a new messenger chatbot called the Africa Farmers Club. And that chatbot provides farmers with local trending news about their crops and a way to connect with other farmers in their local area. When the developers of that app noticed that they were having a gender gap, so over 70% of the users were men, they ran an analysis on Facebook and found out that they had to put women in front and in the center of their marketing. So women then became more often their testimonial for Facebook posts and information they shared on their app. And suddenly, the percentage of women using the service grew again. The IT company Intel focused on closing the digital gender gap by supporting workshops that offer digital literacy training, online peer networks, and gender-relevant con content. There are other similar examples that exist in other countries, uh, for example, um, in Uganda, and that is called Utouch. It, it teaches rural women farmers to use digital tools such as social media to market their products online. For example, is Mom Connect, which is uh, a South African um, National Department of Health initiative that aims to support maternal health through the use of cell phone based technologies integrated into maternal and child health services. The services are free for the users. And the messages, they are available in all 11 official languages in South Africa. Another example is called Choma. Because many young women in South Africa are still not properly informed of the risks of sexually transmitted disease like HIV. And um, awareness programs have not been that successful. The South African health organization HIVSA, together with the GIZ and the Charlize Theron Outreach Project, developed Choma to help young girls with questions about boys, sex, relationships, fashion, lifestyle, and friendship. And Shoma provides a whole range of interactive online formats, such as an online game and an online magazine, where alongside numerous interesting articles, two moderators, and that is very important, they are available around the clock to answer the girls' questions. Because women sometimes face hostility when they seek for advice on health issues online, the program provides online safe spaces, such as a chat room that are only allowed for women. And in addition, a moderator takes care of the netiquette. And experts help women if they seek for advice. So, to sum it up, what should you know before designing a digital component within your agricultural project? to reach out to women and also men in rural areas. First of all, you should know your target group. We cannot speak of a single female target group. Women's realities, opportunities, and challenges are very diverse as their interaction with digital technology is. So services must be designed following a user-centered approach that acknowledges the diversity of female realities, their specific needs, and social situations. I recommend to um, search for the principles for digital de uh, development that you can find online. And after you implemented your tool, you, tr you, you try to find out who is really using it. And you should generate gender-specific data, as I um, presented you in the example of um, Farm Inc., who found out that over 70% uh, of their target group were men. So availability and also affordability of both devices and data, they still present major issues in rural areas in developing countries. Low-income women are much more likely to own basic handsets, and so mobile educational materials will need to be developed for platforms that can be accessed from low-end phones. And this is often voice and SMS. Voice lessons often work well with female users because of potentially low levels of literacy and confidence. At the same time, SMS lessons can be quite effective and that they meet user expectations of what traditional education entails. And users have also something to refer back to. So, however, if a female user is illiterate or if the SMS platform doesn't support local written script, 
there are still potential um, uh, problems. You should make sure that women feel safe when they use your tool. Services must give women the opportunity to speak, to connect, and to interact with each other, and to seek for advice from trusted peers. Fostering the creation of communities could be enormously powerful in raising confidence, feeling of safety, skills, and peer support. Women consistently mention their spouses as transferring uh, knowledge to them, and they view their husbands as legitimate sources of information. And therefore, ICT services should engage men and women in the same household directly and encourage more collaborative learning and decision-making. In other cases, women's use of ICT, especially if advocating around gender-based issues, is likely to challenge existing gender-based power relations. And so programs must anticipate the backlash women may experience as a result. So programs therefore need to be alert to the possible dangers women face online and offline from using ICTs. Users learn more if they are engaged. Using female lead characters offers an opportunity for positive female role models, especially where users are unlikely to have encountered female characters in their other educational experiences. And it enables female users to relate to the content and to identify with the characters and the situation. You should explore locally available ICT providers and you should engage with other organizations because you can be sure that there would, you will not be the first one on the field. You will not be the first one who's trying to use the digital tool for your, for your services. Do you have any experiences in transfer of those good practice experience to other countries? We are in a dialogue with policy stakeholders. We are trying to, to transfer our knowledge to uh, stakeholders like the GIZ as well and trying to inspire others by those best. But what we do not is we are not working in, um, in a specific development project uh, across other countries. Thanks for, again for your input, Francisca. We can go ahead with Peter's um, presentation from Tunisia. Give me the chance to, to um, say a few words about the Tunisian context in the agricultural sector. Between 15 and 30 percent of the annual harvest in Tunisia is lost due to uh, plant diseases and pests. And this, of course, has very uh, negative impacts on food security, on nutrition security, of course, on, on economic factors like income and employment. Women are particularly uh, affected by, uh, by these uh, negative impacts. Um, and another very uh, important issue here in Tunisia is the unemployment rate among rural youth uh, who have quite often a very good uh, education, even university degrees, but they don't find jobs in their local areas. In general, about 60% of the labor force in Tunisia, the Tunisian agricultural sector, uh, is done by women. Women farmers face a lot of challenges in Tunisia. I don't want to go uh, in every single one here. I just want to highlight very often uh, female farmers have very limited, if not no access to information to knowledge and expert know-how. So regarding these challenges, uh, I was just highlighting, we thought about the solution and uh, we wanted to do it in a very innovative way. So we decided, okay, let's try, let's pilot um, a digital solution. So someday we learned about an app, uh, an app that is called Plantix. Plantix works astonishingly easy. All you have to do is to take your smartphone you open the Plantix app, you take a picture of your deceased plant, and within seconds you will get an answer of the possible diseases. So these informations uh, could be the symptoms um, that are visible um, on, on the leaves or roots uh, of the plant, information about the triggers uh, of this disease, but also recommendations how you can treat these diseases. And, and this uh, by organic and uh, conventional treatment measures. You will also find uh, recommendations how you, how you can prevent these diseases in the future. And another is an international exchange forum. So if you take a picture and the app 
is not really sure about the disease that it might be, or you have your, your own doubts, then you just can upload the picture into the community and we'll see answers from all around the world, including international plant experts who will give their vision about or their uh, opinion about the picture and the disease you might have. And all of this will help you um, to take a decision if you should treat this uh, disease, how you should treat, uh, treat it, and so on. At the beginning, we set up uh, a public-private partnership between the two GSZ projects that I have been mentioning before and, bit, uh, and with two um, innovative startups. One is Pete from Germany, who has been inventing the application. The other one is called Royal Green Technologies, um, and it's a small Tunisian startup. The project idea was to adapt, to further adapt uh, Plantix to the specific need of, uh, of female smallholder farmers and to establish a network of what we call women plant doctors. These women are all very young, they are all unemployed, they all live in rural areas, and they all have a university degree. During the past month after their selection, they received a lot of training uh, in technical issues, but also regarding uh, soft skills and even some digital skills. We equipped them with smartphones, exchange. They helped us collecting pictures, taking pictures of thousands of diseases that you would find here in uh, Tunisia uh, from our prioritized crops. And um, these pictures were fed into um, the database of Plantix, which is absolutely crucial. We are now in the phase uh, that uh, these uh, young uh, women plant doctors receive additional coaching in order to develop uh, their own business ideas, business models and um, services that they might offer to uh, the rural population in their local area. Because the idea from the very beginning was that once we have trained, uh, trained them, equipped with smartphones, uh, equipped with the Plantix app, they might be able to offer uh, services. These uh, plant doctors uh, have created their own network uh, with their own brand and it includes also male plant doctors as well as uh, the female uh, plant doctors. And their main, the main idea behind all this is that these plant doctors can bring the app to the local population who have no access to internet and who do not have uh, mobile phones. The project is coming to an end in a couple of weeks. So, of course, we ask ourselves, is the class half full or is it half empty? And, of course, it is half full because we have achieved a lot. Plantix now includes many Tunisian cultures uh, um, and uh, specific diseases and pests you can have, including cultures that are very often produced by smallholder women, like tomato and red pepper. Um, we were able to translate the whole uh, content of the app into French, uh, Tunisian, Arabic. Um, as I said before, the women plant doctors received a lot of training, a lot of coaching, um, and you can see the difference now. You can see the empowerment. If you compare the situation between, nine, uh, between now and nine months ago, now their behavior has completely changed. Uh, the way they talk, the way they exchange, uh, the way they communicate, they have been presenting Plantix at national uh, agricultural fairs. They have been presenting it to political decision makers. Although not everybody is um, convinced and enthusiastic about Plantix, they are taking these young women seriously. They are listening to them. It shows that uh, role models can be changed um, uh, when, when, you, when you invest uh, also in the, in the soft skills of, of these women. Some of these women um, have already now um, starting to work as service providers. Um, it's not all of them, but a few of them. The PlantMed plant network uh, comprised of young male and female plant doctors. We have also um, have been able to conduct first user tests in order to adapt the user interface to make it more user-friendly uh, for female farmers and illiterate people. So all of this is good, but 
the class is also unfortunately half empty. We have done mistakes and uh, we have been facing a lot of complications and challenges. First of all, um, the reduced number or regarding the reduced number of beneficiaries. At the beginning, we were tackling 100 plant doctors, um, of which at least 50 should have been women. But we ended up with only 39, and of these 39, 19 are women only. The few um, functionalities that we wanted to integrate, for example, a text-to-speech function to make it more, uh, uh, make it more accessible for illiterate people and illiterate women, will probably not be working and will not probably not be feasible, unfortunately. We completely underestimated the effect of digital illiteracy. We somehow thought um, that if we adapt Plantix to the specific needs of rural women, they would be able to use it. But the, the digital divide is huge. So you can't expect women who have never had access to, to mobile phones or internet uh, to, to, to use such a, a mobile phone app, uh, even though you might um, adapt it in the best possible manner. The need for support of these young male and female plant doctors was much higher than we thought. Uh, we have invested a lot uh, in them, and although we can see progress, uh, we thought that once we gave them some basic trainings and a mobile phone, they would just go out and change the world, but, um, but change is slow. Although Plantix is not out yet in Tunisia, we are still in the, in the final adaption phase and we will launch it in a couple of weeks. But most likely, uh, Plantix is not an appropriate tool to directly empower female farmers who have never had a smartphone or access to it before. It might be different for other female farmers who are a bit more advanced, a bit more developed. This might, might work better. But at least for the very small, smallholder farmers, uh, the tool is uh, too far away. The, the gap is too big. So technology in itself is not enough. Technology in itself will not empower women. Changing role models is probably even more important than, than the technology. Um, we have seen our young female plant doctors going, going to the field, advising male farmers at the very beginning, but they would just not listen to them. Uh, although their advice was correct and they protected in their fields, they would not accept advice from young, female, from, from young women. Now, with all the soft skills training, uh, with the coaching we did, um, the way they speak up now, uh, we see a bigger impact. Um, if your direct target group are the very small smallholder farmers and women, you might want to work with change agents, with female leaders, with champions. Um, in our case, uh, these, these change agents are the, the plant doctors. In other cases, it might be the sons and the daughters. But uh, you should identify them and work with them because they are more likely to close the gap. Make user tests, and we have heard that before in Francisca's presentations, and I would say make them at an early stage. We did that much too late. We, saw, we were thinking much more about uh, the female smallholder farmers, but we should have thought more from the very beginning about our change agents and how we could empower them. So know your target group, as Francisca was saying before. Digital tools attract the rural youth. Um, it's nothing new, but just to let you know once more, uh, it, it, it makes agriculture sexy again for them. And in general, it generates huge interest from all sides, from politicians, from science, uh, from all different fields, although there is skepticism about it. Last but not least, uh, don't buy cheap smartphones. <laughs> it, it, was just not, uh, it was just not the right uh, choice, but this is um, yeah, a side note. I encourage you to uh, also try it out uh, personally. You can download it in, in app stores. Thank you very much, Peter, for this very inspiring and very honest presentation. The first question that we had was from Pascal, and he asked, um, mm -hmm. um, which of the tools you presented is most promising in terms of expected impact? It depends on how you define impact, first of all. I mean, most of the tools that I presented um, were following different aims. 
Um, if you think about uh, uh, the digital tool as providing information for for rural farmers, um, I think the the how you say the impact that you can measure and that you wanna that you wanna reach is well reaching a large number of women as possible. I guess, and if I think about that, I would say that um, I mean, considering still like um, that uh, internet connection, or if there is internet connection at all, a lack of electricity, or um, very expensive data, uh, for as for example in South Africa, I would say that um, digital or like ICT tools that are still um, you, uh, that are still using radio and television are still those who like who will have the biggest impact when it comes to providing information, followed by services using low-end devices, and then the more sophisticated ones. Who are using um, who are using apps where you would need to use a smartphone for that? Peter, do you want to answer on this question as well? We have a lot of um, harvest losses uh, here in Tunisia, and now measuring the impact on that uh, just uh, by uh, introducing uh, a mobile phone application is very difficult. Um, but I think when it comes to access to information. Uh, and to know how and so on, and so on. If, if, if this is your, if this is the, the impact you, you are looking for, in a country in Tunisia where the IT sector is a bit more developed than in other sub-Saharan countries, uh, where mobile phone rates are already a bit higher than in other sub-Saharan countries, I think it's a good tool to um, to achieve that impact. But still, in the very rural areas, uh, there is no internet, and there, most of the people have no smartphones. And then again, you should maybe look. For for other options, as Francisca was saying it, on, on with SMS, radio, and so on, because these things exist here and they are used and uh, really much more used than a smartphone app. Dès le début, donc, j'ai eu une passion pour les maladies du plante, donc, et surtout les ravageurs, donc, les cafards et tout ça, ça, ça me plaît. Donc, c'est pour cette raison-là, j'ai décidé de m'inscrire dans Plantix, qui est vraiment une grande opportunité pour découvrir ce, ce, ce vaste monde. Euh, J'aimerais donc que l'application Plantix soit reconnue chez les agriculteurs tunisiens et leur satisfaction. Moi, je vois que cette application, elle, elle sera utile pour moi, vu que je suis future promotrice. Je, je vais lancer une, un projet d'une pépinière de production des plantes ornementales, aromatiques et médicinales. Cette application, je vois qu'elle qu elle elle pourra m'aider euh, dans mon projet, je, je peux l'utiliser. Et euh, ça pourra faciliter aux agriculteurs euh, euh, de, le diagnostic des, euh, des maladies. Aussi, euh, elle pourra leur faire gagner beaucoup de temps. There was another question from Paulina. How do you think your project can empower women without leaving men behind or even cause some backlash in the homes? Is there any way you can mitigate this risk? We did not only target female plant doctors or the female plant doctors. Um, we, we had male plant doctors from the very beginning. We supported the, the women a bit more, a bit differently, but, for, but we, we put them into one group. So here in Tunisia, we are not so much talking about the female plant doctors, although they are important for us. We are talking about the plant doctors. And it's a group mixed uh, with men and women, and all of them have received quite substantial support from our side regarding training and regarding uh, also the, the mobile phones. Then there was a question from Nigeria and uh, from Edimu and he asked is there any difference between the Plantix, Plantix app in the Google Play Store and the Plantix version that you're going to use in Tunisia? If you find uh, um, Plantix in the Google Play Store, that's exactly the Plantix we are using here. But every Plantix version, uh, uh, when you download Plantix, it will ask you in which country you are living. And uh, I think the versions that uh, you have are a bit country specific. How would the Plantix doctors intend to generate income? Maybe you can explain that a bit. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's the crucial question. Um, uh, and we are pushing um, our plant doctors to think themselves about that. Because Plantix is for free, 
uh, and will always be for free. Um, so business models with a, with a free um, uh, mobile phone app are always a bit complicated. Our vision is now to get off very valuable um, to farmers regarding plant protection. Uh, now that they are together and they have been recognized as service providers, as a group with a brand and so on, they might be able to, um, to deliver other kind of services that farmers would need. Uh, but this, they have to develop uh, their by themselves, and we are coaching them to develop their own ideas individually, but also as a group, as uh, uh, regarding the plant net uh, um, network. It might be very different, and uh, we are just supporting them developing their own business ideas, their own services, and uh, it's up to them uh, to go on with that uh, individually or to work as a group. But we have, for example, now Pete, uh, who has been like the German startup. Um, they now want to work with PlantMed, so with the network of the plant doctors, to conduct surveys, for example, in, in Tunisia, to learn more about uh, the realities of smallholder farmers in Tunisia. So the, the plant doctors in the, in the PlantMed network, they can conduct these uh, uh, surveys and uh, they will receive money for it. Then there was another question from Marina, also again to you, Peter. Um, thank you for sharing the experiences from Tunisia, Peter. Could you elaborate more on the reasons for the dropouts and the rel relatively low number of women plant doctors? When we were launching uh, the, the application uh, procedure, I think we had about 400 applications from young people around Tunisia. And, uh, yeah, people were getting uh, uh, interested into the project, including the ministry. And then they uh, were saying, listen, uh, you are going to train uh, private uh, agricultural advisors. But to be an agricultural advisor in Tunisia, you must fulfill certain criteria. Amongst others, you need a, a university degree, and you must be specialized in, in certain fields of agriculture. Um, so immediately, um, our final choice, our selection procedure was much harder and severe than we thought at the beginning. So after that, we, we started with about 70-something uh, planters, um, and the NGO is working with us. I was not uh, talking about that, but we have an NGO, uh, a contract with an NGO who is supposed to to follow and to encourage and to accompany the, the, these young plant doctors. They they were not very reactive at the very beginning, so quite quick um, we went from 70 to 39 that we have now. Uh, they are very committed and motivated. Um, so the number is, is low, unfortunately. Uh, but at least we ended up with people who really uh, uh, defend the project and, and want to go further. And yeah, uh, there, there might be maybe a, a next phase or something uh, where we uh, would be aware of the, of the selection criteria that have been uh, demanded by the authorities here. So uh, to point it out, you have a very strong pilot group now, Peter, as far as I understand, and this pilot group Group also is maybe the best gatekeepers you can have. At the beginning, it, it was not it was not like I expected. We have young, motivated people. You give them a smartphone, you give them training, and then they will just go out and change the world. So, um, so it, it, it took substantial efforts, uh, substantial uh, inputs as well, and, and now they are really. Uh, um, they understood that it's a, it's a unique chance they have because most of them have been unemployed for, for a couple of years. Uh, um, and they found themselves, they exchanged, they think together. There was one more question for you, Francisca. And the question I think you saw it already is, mm -hmm. um, how can, pro again, according to your experience, to your research, how can projects guarantee equal access to Internet and smartphones for women and men? The background of this question is, even if women get access to a smartphone or internet, it might be taken away from family members or even from their husbands. It is very important to engage with gate, potential gatekeepers as family members, as um, mothers-in-law, 
law or their husbands um, right from the beginning on. And what, what you can do is you can inform uh, and you can explain how access and use of digital tools could help the women, um, could help them and could, could also help the family, uh, could help maybe gaining access to information and in the next step, um, through that information, gain access to financial services or whatsoever, so that in the very end, not only women um, would take advantage out of that access. I would like to ask Francisca what she thinks about our project in Tunisia. I was very excited, to be honest. I found it very interesting, like uh, getting your insights into um, the the barriers and also the potential of, of of your project was very was very interesting. So I think it's. Um, I would like to. Um, continue a discussion with you. Perfect. This is what great. we have the webinars for. Okay, great. Thank you very much to everyone who was listening. I shared the link to the SNRD website again. Yeah, so now it's, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you. I hope we see, us, see each other again in the next webinar, which will be then announced through our email list and also on the SNRD website.